First of all, I just wanted to say thank you for the responses already to the article, and thank you to Paul Herman of CCLI for writing the article. Our uh, responses are already coming in on uh, things such as which drum should I use if I were going to just use one. Um, my personal favorite is just the regular box cajon. Now, this of course is mine, but you can use any box cajon and do kind of sort of the same effect. <laughs> With this particular one, I designed this specifically for a deeper bass sound down here and for a snare up on the top and a rim shot. So you have a little bit of a different thing that you can do with it just with your hands all alone. So let's say I wanted to just back somebody up with my hands. I can take them and I can play gently. The drum has different sounds in different areas. So if you want to throw microphones in the mix, you can actually throw microphones in different areas and you can tune those microphones to different frequencies and pitches and actually get different sounds out of your sound system. So it's kind of cool. But anyway, you can hear You don't have to play hard, especially if you mic it. Right now we have it mic'd. I've got some area mics just to kind of grab some sound for us and uh, let you be able to hear all the little nooks and crannies that are going on. And I do have a snare mic in the back. We'll show you that in a minute. And I have a kick mic in the back so you can get those lows coming through. Basically, just so you can hear what I'm doing. Picks up the snares. The other thing is the face entirely is a playing surface. So you can make noise with this thing, and in a minute I'll show you how to do that with uh, some other um, percussion style um, accessories. So first of all, notice how it changes. So you can rock the house. Just keep the hands moving. Um, I watched several videos. Uh, it's been about two years since I've started playing this thing, so I am not a professional. I don't claim to be, but I do know that both hands got to be moving in order for anything to really be effective on this thing. And people who have done it have, you know, reported success in their worship teams and their just outings and having fun and showing them to their friends and family. So try to just work on keeping those hands moving around the drum. There's all sorts of different styles, there's all sorts of different beats, but the very first thing you're going to do if you buy one of these and don't know how to use it is learn how to just keep your hands moving. You can do all sorts of different things with just your hands. So that's enough of that. I just wanted to show you basically that you can use this as a kit, almost. Um, you've got your bass, you've got your snare, you've got a rim shot. Not all of them have a rim shot on it. I designed this one specifically with no screws here because I wanted more sound. Um, I wasn't expecting to sell. I just wanted more sound. It ended up being a, a neat thing. I like it. And others have a rim shot in them, but they don't have the same snare. They don't have the same bass or, or other things like that. So this ended up being uh, really good for what we wanted to use in our worship service. Um, other than that, there's some neat percussive uh, accessories you can get. I like these because they have some scratch. They have some tinny sounds, some uh, cymbaly type sounds that come out of it. You can mic this, or you can let this grab it, or you can let the snare from the inside grab it by putting the snare mic more internally into the drum and set it more towards the high sounds, the high frequencies. And you can not only get your snare, but you can also get those as you're touching the face of it. So anyway, another thing you can do is you can just have these and you can, there's your cymbal. practice with it and just get some different sounds out of it. These, you can use these rubber bands and you can push them up higher or lower and you can take those rubber bands and you can really good kick. So you've got a kick drum 
that's less offensive than the actual drum system or a drum set set up and a smaller service. So you get a lot of sound coming out of there. So the bass, and then up top, you get more of the snare sound. You still get some of that low, you get mostly a snare. You get that. So you can just kind of Stuff like that. Anyway, and then you can also come up here and do your on the snare if you want. So anyway, I like these. I like it. again, I'm not a professional, but I choose to use these because it's something that's fun for me to practice with and learn more fancy different techniques. Now another uh, accessory you can use is the nice little plastic. These are nylon, I believe, brushes, and you can get these from Promark. Those are also Promark. Those are called broom brush sticks. These, I think I just called nylon brushes, and uh, they make a really cool shaker. It's pretty full sound for not really having a shaker on them. So if you have a couple of these in your pocket, it gives you some additional stuff that you can throw in the mix, you know, as you're sitting there and uh, your uh, guitar starts playing and he's playing a little bit softer, and you're thinking, well, I don't want to start going. And just, or even just one, two, three, four. I do recommend that you learn some timing. Uh, there's totally different timings for the different songs. Um, most of the worship songs that we do here, we switch up the timing every other song. So um, learning the timing is going to be important. I do plan on sharing some of that with you in the future. Right now, I just wanted to answer, you know, my favorite for, if I'm going to just have one drum, is this one, because I can get so much out of just one drum. So again, I'm Robbie, and uh, right now I'm going to show you real quick the mics, and then I'm going to let you get back to your uh, particular worship services. Okay, so as you see up here, I put a couple area mics, and these are just some audics. That's just to grab an overall sound. I did that specifically for this video. You can do that if you want to in your service, but you don't have to. Mainly, when I have the drum mic'd, I just put these two out here, and that's it. I don't do a whole lot of other fancy stuff unless I'm going for a particular sound. Um, the bigger one is the kick mic, you can see right here. And I've shown this in another video, but I just wanted to show it again. Um, and this is just a regular snare mic. I've just put it on the outside here, but if you take it and extend it inside the box, you get a whole lot more um, of that sound from the sound plate or from the playing skin on the other side. So anyway, thank you for watching my video and I hope you enjoy your drums.